All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, we're going over how to fix macOS stability issues when connecting to a NAS. And this is pretty much gonna work for everybody. Synology, True NAS, QNAP, whatever you've got. If you're having trouble with your macOS staying connected, we're gonna go over all of that. And specifically, there is a bug in macOS right now that actually causes crashing, especially when you're like exporting out of Premiere, DaVinci, or Final Cut, and doing other things in Lightroom, specifically imports in Lightroom, that basically just causes macOS to completely disconnect during a transfer, causing it to fail, or crash during an export. And I've mostly been seeing it in those specific programs, but I have definitely seen it in other things. And for whatever reason, even though this has been around for like two months now, macOS still has not patched it. So this is how the fix will work as well. And we're gonna talk about that at the end. But we're gonna start by kind of just going over general stuff to make macOS play a little bit nicer with Synology. And by far the most common thing that I get from people is that the share is just disconnected every time you like open up Lightroom and things like that. And that's actually fundamentally how Mac OS works. And it's a lot different than how Windows works, specifically when connecting to a file server. When Windows connects to a file server, you have a thing called map a network drive. And what that does is it makes that network drive always there, no matter what. However, Mac OS does not do this. Instead, Mac OS just connects to it and mounts the drive. It's the difference between a map and a mount. A mount is ephemeral. It only lasts as long as the connection is, and then it goes away. With a mapped drive, which is what Windows does, it's always there, and if the NAS is on a different network and it can't connect, it just shows as a red X. And so if you're not really aware of this, and you open up Lightroom, and all of a sudden your media is disconnected every time, it can be really confusing. And so that's where I kind of want to go over first here. So the way Mac OS connects is you actually have to tell it every single time what to connect to. So right here, if we look, we can see on my sidebar that we are actually connected to three different network drives. And the way I get this to pop up is I come into Finder, Settings, General, Show Connected Servers on the Drive. And I think this is really useful because it allows you to see, hey, what servers are currently connected. And that way, if these aren't there and you open up Lightroom and Lightroom's referencing them, same thing with Capture One, same thing with Premiere. All of those are referencing these drives on the side, not the actual server, but macOS connection to the server. So it's slightly different. If those are not there, none of those programs are going to be able to connect. And so I think showing the connected servers on desktop really helps you understand that. And all you have to do then to connect them is literally click on them. So I'm gonna go ahead and eject these. And now there are two different ways to connect to them. You could just click on it right through the network portal right here. For me, the way I connect is I do Command K and I hit Enter and I connect like that. So it's slightly different. For most people, what you'll do is you'll just click on it on network and once you click on one of the drives, just like this, it mounts it. And so you can see it connects just like that. And now let's say we wanna make a shortcut so it's always there. And so we don't have to go through and find this menu every time. We can actually add a shortcut in Finder by clicking right here and dragging over. Really weird niche thing, I'm not gonna go over it too much. You need to be on this screen or one other screen to actually drag it over. If you try to drag it over from this, it does not work. The icon is different, and that's how you know. If you're ever dragging this icon, it'll work. If you're dragging this icon, it will not. But now, it's always just going to be mounted there. And to get it to connect, I can just click on it once. And you can see it connects. And as soon as that connects, now Premiere, Lightroom, whatever you're using, now sees it, and that is how you do it. So that is a really common thing I get from people that are very confused as to why your media is always offline and always having trouble, and all you have to do is just make sure that the network drive is connected beforehand. Another thing that often happens is macOS loves to disconnect from these, and the number one way to kind of fix that is to come in and edit a couple of power settings. One really useful thing we can do is come into our battery settings and go into this options right here, 
And we can actually come in here and wake for network access can actually cause issues. So if you set that to never, it tends to stay a little bit more sticky. And then put hard disks to sleep when possible. You can say never. These two things actually do help contribute to macOS being a little bit more stable when connecting on in, specifically if it disconnects while it's sleeping. And one more really useful setting here is prevent automatic sleeping on power adapter when the display is off. This is really useful if you're production and you're trying to make sure that you can always like export and you're finding that exports are failing if it's like a five hour export. Have this on can make sure it stays connected and does not go to sleep and disconnect everything. So a lot of times this will help a lot and tends to just help make sure it stays connected. Okay, so the last little just stability tip I've got before going over the fix if you're actually having those crashes is if you're somebody like me who has a laptop that you carry around and you also use a adapter like a 10 gigabit or a 2.5 gigabit networking adapter when you're doing your real work and you're finding that sometimes the NAS is just super, super, super slow. You might find that you're actually talking to the NAS over Wi-Fi even though you're hooked up over wired ethernet. So right now you can see under my network settings right here, I've got a 10 gigabit Thunderbolt connection and Wi-Fi on right now. And the way macOS works is it's always going to initiate new connections with whatever's fastest. So obviously a 10 gigabit Thunderbolt adapter is gonna be faster than Wi-Fi. And so if I were to connect to a server right now, it would first try that connection over the 10 gig. However, let's say I am hooked up and the drive is mounted right now and it was mounted over Wi-Fi. Mac OS is actually going to stay connected to that over Wi-Fi until it can't anymore. What that means is if you're somebody who always has the drive mounted, you're downstairs, you're working on, on Wi-Fi and you go in and you plug into wired 10 gig, you might find that your connection to the NAS is still over Wi-Fi, even though it could be way faster over wired Ethernet. So what I tend to recommend people do is if you find that, and you're somebody you'll definitely realize, as it will be incredibly slow, make sure anytime you plug into wired network, make sure to always turn your Wi-Fi off, and that way you'll never have that problem. If you're somebody who's actually working on it, you find it very quickly. And so if you just notice, hey, it's being really slow for some reason, just turn Wi-Fi off really quick and that'll force it to switch over to the 10 gigabit dongle. So those are just three quick tips that I try to get out there and haven't really ever put in a video before. And the last thing I wanna go over is how to fix that really annoying Mac OS bug where it's crashing on exports or imports, depending on what software you're using. So if you're finding that the shares will just disconnect halfway through an import in Lightroom or an export in Premiere. This is the fix for it. I actually have an article that I'm going to leave a link down in the description below that kind of goes over how to do this, but it involves editing this in SMB config file. If you've never used terminal before, it can be a little daunting, but it's not too hard. And this is pretty easy to do, but just make sure you're comfortable with it and kind of double check. I've got screenshots here that hopefully will let you double check against them. But what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to copy this command and I'm going to command space to open up terminal. So terminal is this guy right here. And it is a command line interface to your computer that actually lets you change settings that are not available otherwise. And what we want to do is we're going to say sudo, which gives us root access, so super permission, nano, which is just a text editor, and then this file path, which is the configuration file for SMB. So what we're going to do is basically set default for whenever macOS is connecting. When we hit enter, it's going to ask for a password. We're going to type in our macOS password. And as you can see, you won't see your characters typing while you do that. Instead, you hit enter and it is actually typing them in. And now we've got this little nano window. This is our little text editor. And all we have to do is paste in this. You should not see anything here. If you do, that means you've done something like this in the past and you just kind of have to make sure you know what you're doing. But all I'm gonna do is paste in this code. And what this does is it says, hey, by default, whenever you're connecting to an SMB server, which Synology is and all your other NASs are, these are the default settings I want you to use. Streams is a specific Apple protocol. 
Soft means it's not going to be a hard lock, so it'll lock everything down. And it can help with small timeouts. And the important one right, right here is this signing required. So what this does is it signs all server packets to make sure that the server is who it says it is. And for whatever reason, this has been one of the major causes as far as I've been able to find when these crashes are going on. So now all we've got to do is once it looks like this, we're going to hit control X to exit. Y because we want to save it and enter to write it. And now it is going to use these settings every single time we connect. So easiest thing to do to make sure it works is to just reboot your computer. But you can also actually just eject the network share and then reconnect to it. And now it should work. One useful tip that you might be able to do if you want to is there's this SMB util that macOS has. If you type in this exact command on the command line and hit enter, you'll see some useful information about how it is. And the way you know it worked is at the bottom here, you'll see this signing on true. That's how you know that it did in fact connect and it did use that. And with that, you should not have any more issues with this. And I've seen this across a ton of software and I fixed it about probably 15 times total now. And every single time it's worked. If you're having those crashes where the server just disconnects halfway through an import or an export and it just says offline and it's routine, this will almost certainly fix it. So waiting on macOS to actually publish this fix. But for now, this is what you do. And it's not something you really need to worry about having in the future. However, if you do want to remove what we've done there, you can actually do a sudo rm and paste in this exact same file path and delete this file. So if you wanted to delete what we just had there, you type in sudo rm, so that says super user, remove file, and the file we created to have those settings. So if anything goes weird and you wanna undo what you did, just type in this and all those settings will be gone on the next reboot. All right, well that's gonna be it for this. If you have any other questions, put those down in the comments below. And if you wanna hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. And have a good one, bye.